called baby ATI 2.0 to build agents by itself. So if you remember back in the day, probably a year back, one of the few libraries or frameworks that kicked off autonomous agents or what we call as AI agents these days is baby AGI. Now we have got baby AGI 2.0. This is a Python library with which you can build self developing agents. In this video, I would like to quickly show you what is baby AGI 2.0. We're going to take a look at the Python library and see a very small example, not like your typical crew AI. This is not like your typical Pyotogen kind of a stuff. I think it requires a little bit of mental rewiring how to use it and then use it accordingly. But let's take a look at it and then understand what is baby AGI 2.0 and if it can start a new revolution of self developing agents. So you've got Yohei, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing the name correctly. So you've got Yohei, Yohei, um, that is that probably sounds right. So this is baby AGI 2. Uh, it's a Python framework for building a self building autonomous agent. So here you're not specifically saying the agent like these are the agents that you need it itself is supposed to build the agents by itself like given a goal. So what it can do is it can store and execute functions from a database. Uh, it's got a uh, auto logging so I can quickly show you the logging here. So you can go here and then see the logging that are happening here. And also that it has a built in dashboard. The one that I currently showed you is the dashboard. So you can go to home. There are instructions. You have graphs. You can see what is happening, what kind of relationships are there. And it also has got a, you know, a self building functionality prototype. There are a couple of examples there, but main important thing is if you were to use baby AGI 2.0, all you have to do is you have to do pip install baby AGI then import baby AGI, then you have to create a dashboard. So I'm going to quickly show you my code. So if you go here, so I've got the dashboard here. So import baby AGI and you create a dashboard in this particular link and uh, run it. I think this is a flask based application, I guess. And once you run it, the dashboard is available. Then you can go run any baby AGI code, anything as simple as this to print hello world to anything as complicated as this to create a salesperson at a sa uh, enterprise SaaS company. So this would ideally create a salesperson with one task or two tasks or three tasks. So you can do anything with that and you can monitor that on the dashboard as well. So the very simple code out um, the code skeleton would look like this import the library, create a dashboard, then add the key in this case, open AI key. Um, right now one one thing that uh, was quite Something that I try to overcome is it currently has a hard coded model. So if you have a model, um, if you have open AI or if you have any other model, unless until you have access to the GPT 4O model, I think GPT 4 turbo. So you can't use anything else. Uh, I think the creator of the library would probably add the model dynamically. But if you, if you were to use this, you need to have access to the GPT 4 class of models. So you add the open AI API key, then register a function. This is a very important thing. I think what baby AGI like from, from a, a very vast outlook, it looks like it's trying to have a very strong functional programming paradigm. And uh, if you see a lot of other libraries in the AI world, like for example, DSPY, this is all strong object oriented programming foundations. But I think this almost looks like, you know, you can register a function, you can pass a function as a dependency. You can uh, make one function be dependent on another function, not necessarily truly functional programming paradigm, but I think everything here is a function. It's like if you want an arm, it's a function. If you want a bunch of fingers, it's a function. So you register a function the function name is hello world and it can return hello world. So once you go baby AGI and execute it, it just returns you hello world. There is no AI in it. It just explains the framework. We'll quickly see another example how you can have dependencies. So I'm going to go to my visual studio code. I've already installed this on my local computer. So if you can see here, uh, I've got a uh, first, let me stop whatever it is running. So I'm going to stop this. Yes, I've stopped this cleared this. So if you go here to um, the code editor, I've got import baby AGI and uh, at baby AGI, there is a decorator. I'm registering a function. The function name is called world and it returns a world. Okay. Now register a function that depends on, depends on world. So what does it mean? It means you're creating a new function that requires this function to give you something. So imagine you are trying to create a, a sales agent and you need a research agent and probably you need somebody who can do copywriting or contacting uh, third parties. 
So the first one has to finish the task and give it to you so that the second one can start. So this is kind of a similar setup. So you've got the second function. This is diff hello world. And this calls a function world. That means it takes a world returned here X and then it prints a returns hello world. Now, finally you go execute it and then you will see what is happening. So I'm going to run this or say Python baby AGI simple pi. So when I run this, as you can see here, it is running everything and uh, it is also loading everything. So you can see here, um, everything is done here. I'm going to call this, open this in my browser. Open this in my browser. Oh, I have to call the dashboard. Sorry, dashboard. And if you go see here, so you can see that uh, dynamically adds a new function. So there is a new add function. So we kicked it off somewhere here. So let's see where did we kick it off? I think we kicked it off here. So it's uh, trying to add the function, um, add a new function, execute function wrapper. And if you go click here and then you can see further more details, like what time we executed and what kind of function it is calling internally. You can update your function if you want. There are different versions that you can see. So it basically gives you the details. And if you go see the graph, then you can see how you are extending this um, somewhere like this was already there. This is already part of baby AGI. And now we extended it with the world and uh, you have got hello world. So if you go see the code here, uh, description here, so you have got uh, a dependencies world. Hello world is dependent on world. So you can click here and then see the code. So it basically gives you everything in a very graph format. So the functions are like graphs and they are interconnected and they are stored in databases. And uh, that is basically baby AGI. So according to the creator, it's it's not a production ready solution yet. So this is a, this is a new concept altogether. Like you need a different thinking wire and you need to create based on that. So what are the philosophies or design principles? So the agents should build itself. You should not manually define the agents, which is what we do with crew AI, which is what we do with PyOtogen. The functions should be small and use each other more reliable to use. I think this is a very important concept of agent, which is called cooperation. You need to have multiple functions cooperating with each other, uh, having dependency, solving things, giving back to them. And uh, this has that principle. Store code as a graph structure in database. That's why we are able to see the graph, uh, the network and all those things. Build the simplest thing that can build itself. It will be fun to see if uh, it can take a bigger form. And uh, I'm definitely looking forward to see if we can put together a project that will help us understand this at a much bigger space. So baby AGI framework has mainly three parts. One is a functions. So if you go to the code, um, let me open a new tab, import baby AGI. Okay. Maybe I should use the current one. Yeah. So if I go to the current one, go down baby AGI dot functions, as you can see here. So if you've got functions and dot and under this, you have got a lot of things add key, add function, activate function version. Uh, you get all the secrets that are stored in your database. You get the logs, you can register a function. You can update a function, a bunch of things that you can do. So like I said, everything is a function. So you define a function and make the function usable for other parts of the code. So functions is a core function that function framework for registering and executing functions out of database. The dashboard is a no code UI for managing functions and logs plus chat. I still could not completely understand how I can make use of the chat. Like for example, I can go here. Uh, let me refresh this. I can go here. Hello. So I've got hello world here. So I can add, oh, sorry. I, I have to add hello world and then say, what is this? I don't know if I should send a question here or I should, you know, for example, I should say world. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what to do with this chat yet. Um, I'm also continuously learning, but there is a chat interface which you can use. And then there are like some default functions and also optional function packs to load. So if you see my second example here, so you would actually notice that uh, here it is loading some functions. So there is a draft, uh, the code writing function, the self build function, and all you are saying is, okay, a salesperson at an enterprise SaaS company, and then it is going to build itself. If you have got the GPT-4 access, it again gives you um, the detailed uh, of description about how the network structure will look like. So what's unique about the framework is storing function dependencies, other functions in the DB it uses 
imports. So everything is stored in DB as a function. And um, there are a bunch of other things that you have got. Function page comes with auto generated execution form in um, input parameters, code, logs, everything. So the final screen that I showed you here. So if I go here and if I go to, let's say this function screen, let me look for hello world. And if I click this, you can see everything. You can see a function here. So a function getting executed. You can, um, you can see the dependencies uh, where, what is it uh, depending upon? You can see everything else. There are some packs and plugins uh, that are available right now. So you can connect it to a search engine with a SERP API. You can uh, enable uh, web crawling with a fire crawl. You can also uh, use uh, E2B, which is to create like your own code sandbox uh, for code interpreter kind of a stuff. There are a bunch of things. I'm yet to try out these things, but I was quite excited to see if we can discuss, um, you know, a new level of uh, what you can do. So for example, you, you can see like multiple different, so there is no self build here. The user sends a query, the AI selects a function from the function library, it returns the function. You then the AI uses a function and then generates an answer done. Now the level two is request based. So the user is requesting a function. So it's creating a function tool and then bunch of things are happening, generating the answer, giving back. Level two is need based and level three is what is anticipatory. So it is anticipating what you have to do and then based on that, it is going to do. So for example, in need based, the user sends a query to AI, AI looks for a function, whether the function exists or not. The function doesn't exist. It actually creates a function. So it goes on to creating a code that will create the function and then it does everything. In anticipatory user starts with, uh, you know, uh, just an information about what kind of interaction it should have. And then everything is like self built based on that. So this is the vision of the founder, uh, baby AGI 2.0 is here. If you have got a lot of time in hand, I would strongly encourage you to try out this new library. But like I said, right now the library has a hard coded model value. So if you were to use the uh, library, so I can go show you here where the code is go to baby AGI and uh, go to functions and uh, go to core. I think I have to go to DB, DB, sorry, packs to go to packs and default AI functions. If you go here, so you would see that it is defaulted to GPT 4.0. It's currently hard coded. I think there should be an easier way for us to change the model, change the API, um, use a different one. I think those things will come uh, in the future. Once community starts kicking in, uh, the creator also has, uh, put a form if you were to contribute or do something with this. So yeah, if you like this, this is under MIT license, a star the repository, quite excited to see that baby AGI after probably a year, I guess, like I still use the original baby AGI's workflow to teach people whenever I teach AI agents, it's a very easy way to understand how you want AI agents to function. And I think autonomous computing is something that we are all looking forward. Even open is doing it. So let's see if baby AGI can take us there. If not baby AGI, at least it should serve as an inspiration for all of us to build something around this thing. I hope this video was helpful, a bit rusty because I don't have a lot of information, but I hope it was helpful in learning a new library. Um, see you in another video. Happy prompting.